If you're using a PC to make music, stream games, and possibly stream your music, you've probably heard about Voice Meter. Don't worry, I'm here to help. Hello, heathens. Thank you so much for joining the channel. I'm JD Blue. I'm a guitarist, a goth, a gamer, and a giant nerd. And for the purposes of this video, we're going to be giant nerds together. I'm assuming you want to use voice meter to get your audio from your microphone and your guitar into your DAW plugin, whatever else you want to use, and then automatically out into something like OBS for streaming. You are in luck. I have decided to task me with getting you there. For this experiment, you're going to need to download Voice Meter Potato. The link is in the description. You are going to need access to your sound card's routing, as in your sample rate and buffer size. And then, just to make sure that we've done all this correctly, you are going to need any plugin or DAW that you may want to route this to. Okay, let's get started. I'm spoiler alerting here just a little bit because I want to make sure that you've got everything that you need. Now, when you install Voice Meter Potato, I'm going to assume you know how to install software. Just a guess. Please do actually restart your computer because it does help Potato actually take over your audio. I don't know the scientifics behind it, but it totally does. So what you have here is the three things that I mentioned you need. You have, in my case, the 2i2 routing, sample rate, buffer size. You have the actual voice meter potato screen that is intimidating as balls, but we will get there. And then in the back here, you have a plugin. I happen to love STL tones, so I've got my tone hub back there. We'll get to that in just a minute. First things first, what you want to do is actually set up where your audio is outputting. This seems kind of counterintuitive because you'd want to make sure that you're getting the inputs right. As you can see, my voice is making that view meter move. But we got to get that to go somewhere. Up here are your outputs. You can see hardware out. It tells you sample rate and buffer size. And here it also tells you that I have chosen my Focusrite USB ASIO, which is what the 2i2 uses when it's installed on a PC. How you pick it is you simply go into your A1 and scroll. Don't worry so much. We're not going to use MME or KS or WDM. Those are all Windows specific. We want ASIO. So you're definitely going to pick your vo focus right. Yours will vary, of course, whatever sound card you happen to have. Pick the main ASIO driver that you're expecting. You can pick any alternative number of outputs as well. I used to, for a while, have my A2 as speakers, and then I routed my speakers a little differently. Don't worry about that. You can, not relevant to this conversation. So first things first, you have to figure out, and I notice I got it wrong. Look at that. We're going to correct it together. You have to output, you have to get your mic input going into the proper input, or your mic output going into the proper, you know what I mean. So we're going to go into the menu. I'll get to this in just a second, because that's very important. This is also very important. This is not very important, but we'll go in order. So you go into your system settings. And here you will see, oh, no wonder it sounded like trash. Okay. I don't know why this happened. Whenever there's a Windows update, potato, banana, voice meter, OG, they all screw up. This is not how they're supposed to be. So you can right-click to back that off. and then. You can, what this does is it maps your microphone input on my 2i2, which is a two physical input. I have my mic on the left input and my guitar or instrument on the right input. So what should happen is your inputs should also match. Well, you have five inputs. That's why it says in one, two, three, four, five. Those all work up here. One, two, three, four, five. There's your math lesson for the day. So your input one, it really doesn't matter if you do stereo or mono. I prefer mono. And then you'll see I also have it labeled mono because I'm really anal about this. And then your input two, which in my case is my instrument, you just click it up to two and away you go. And if you were looking at the screen, you saw the tone hub there actually shift a little bit. 
this is a really great example of how things can screw up, and I'm happy it did uh, because now I've got it correct, and now I can start to go on with everything else. The other main thing you want to do is whatever you label here on your on your instrument input, whether it's one, two, seven, twenty, who cares, is make sure that first of all, you're down here at the patch inserts. This is key. This is how we get it to go into your plugins, DAWs, whatever, and fully route the signal. If you don't highlight these, and I'll show you what I mean, they will not take the signal back from the plugin, DAW, et cetera, et cetera. You won't have real-time monitoring. In fact, as in my experience, you won't have any monitoring. So we've highlighted right two on input two. So my input two right is highlighted. What that does is it transports the signal. These ones here in four left and right is kind of a little trick I picked up. I won't go over that in this video, but this is wonderful for setting a master track output on your DAW and having it come back in through VoiceMe. That's all the spoiler I'm going to give you. Basically, we need here. Also, for whatever reason, you don't need to do that for your microphone. I have not figured out why. I cannot explain it. Please just go with me. Now we have everything set up. One thing you may notice when Potato comes in is that these sample rates are insanely high. Do not change them. Do not be alarmed. I don't know why. Sometimes they will default to the lowest, which is 384. And that sucks. It ruins your audio. Just leave them at the highest one and never think about it again. So right now you can see, obviously, that my latency is pretty high. This will take you a good half an hour to figure out where your compromise is. If you are using this application primarily for voice, then 192 is a pretty reasonable buffer size and it won't matter nearly at all. It'll still get you through voice meter into whatever you need and into, I'm going to use OBS because I'm assuming that's what you're using for streaming. For the musicians in the crowd, I understand this is driving you a little twitchy because it drove me a little twitchy. I went from using about 16 to 32 to get the maximum chug up to 192. Now the scientists tell me that the human ear can't really determine the latency difference between 32 and 192 because that difference is about two milliseconds or less than two milliseconds to about eight milliseconds round trip. I don't know if I'm being an uber nerd, but I really can hear the difference. So be aware that you will sacrifice latency in your music for this configuration to work. It's not going to affect your technique at all. I don't find it's that different when I'm playing, but it is something to keep in mind. And it's actually one of the main negatives I have about this. So once you have set up your sound card and you'll know you've set up your sound card, there won't be any crackles. There won't be any weird distortion. There won't be any artifacting. It takes time. I can't tell you what your magic number is. You have to experiment. So once you have that down, you never have to set it again. So we can get rid of that. Now, how you're hearing me, I'm, I have to go backward a little bit here. How you're hearing me now is a direct result of this B3. You can think of the A channels in your input strips as auditions. So anything you want to monitor, you can monitor, of course. So it doesn't matter to me because I'm not monitoring through cans and I don't have my speakers on. But theoretically, since my A1 output is my main sound card, I would definitely want to generally monitor that. And then you can see over here on the monitoring, these are the outputs, you can see that I am now mimicking the two meters. The same is true for my guitar. I definitely want to hear that. So I would just click that on. And again, if you want that to come out through any of the other outputs that you may have selected through your choice, all you have to do is click the corresponding button. Simple as that. The B channels are basically broadcasting. So this is where you route 
your final audio to wherever it is it's going, be that your DAW, your plugin, straight into OBS, you know, choice is yours. This concept took me a little bit to get over, but these are actually your B inputs up here. Bio, um, this is actually called aux, but I've already labeled it for my use for chat. And then PC audio, because you can actually route the entirety of every sound your PC makes through voice meter. Useful for gamers, useful for streamers, not at all practical for music making. So use at your own risk. I'm not really going to get into it. The concept that took me a while to get into was the fact that these are not hard and fast. Like this input does not necessarily have to be that output. And that took me way too long. Once I figured it out, this all came together. This is why this video is taking so long. So B3 is my VIO3 output. This is important when you're going into honestly just OBS. It doesn't matter about anything else, really, I don't think. I'm probably wrong on that. Correct me in the comments. So B2 then becomes my aux. I don't know why I think of guitar as an aux cable. It's literally the thing in your car that you can plug your, your friend's Android into because they're too cheap to have an iPhone and have CarPlay. That's basically how I think of it. So then your guitar would be routed through there. And if you don't believe me, I will show you a demonstration once we log in to the plugin of choice. Log into the plugin. You get what I mean. And then B1, I have it on, again, this is the special channel right here. You also see I have Spotify or your music app of choice, and you can route that through here. I highly recommend that for streamers, or if you're the type of person who learns a song on a stream and you're chugging away and you want to just repeat and get that copyright demonetization going, this is a way you can do that. So your audience can hear what you're listening to. They can hear your pause and, and rewind and all that other good stuff. It's a great way to get that going. And again, that's routed through A1. And if I were to route it, I think I would honestly put that on the B1 channel as well. Your mileage may vary. Not really important. You're here for the guitar. So we have our guitar. It is set up. It's broadcasting through the aux. And we also have, I'll do a little reminder here, the insert. This is key getting it into your plugin. One more step before we go into the plugin, I'm going to show you that menu. Auto restart audio engine. Although voice meter is arguably the best program for audio routing in Windows, it is also one of the worst. Sometimes you'll hear a crackle, a blur, or that weird distortion. And what voice meter can do is automatically correct itself. Highly recommend keeping this on. You will lose like a second or two of audio. If you're not monitoring, you won't notice, but it'll come back and you just have to do a plugin. System tray run at startup. This is so that it automatically takes over. Again, this is why I have my PC audio routed over here, because as soon as my computer boots up, voice meter boots up, and it takes control of my audio. How I show that, since it's in the VIO3, is in your PC sound. You can see voice meter VIO3. This is all sort of next level stuff. You don't have to, but I honestly think if you are running your stream and your music all at the same time, I think this is the optimal way to do it. Hook volume key. I honestly turned this off. I have no idea what the hell this does. So whatever, it can go away. Now we need to make sure this is inserted. Perfect. Let's go in to our guitar plugin of choice, shall we? There's my tone hub. I want to move it over here. So you are looking at this channel strip and you are looking at the audio IO of your plugin. Many plugins IOs look very similar. So this shouldn't be too difficult to decipher for your own end. You can mute the audio if you want. I actually like keeping it on because that feedback lets me know I'm alive. So your audio device type, of course, uh, Windows audio, trash, direct sound, trash, Osio, it's what we're using. The device, spoiler alert here, you can see you can just go through your sound card as you normally would if you weren't doing the voice meter setup. Reroute ASIO is for a different video because as soon as I finish this video and I like the quality, I'm never using the setup again, spoiler alert. And then you have your voice meter inputs. We highlighted that insert patch for a reason. 
And it's this reason right here. You use your potato, insert virtual, clicky clicky. You have to make sure that you're set up correctly. Now, even if you have the mono input, make it a stereo output. And this is on whatever channel you want. You can see I can scroll down to input eight. So whatever input channel you have, make sure that it matches that stereo output. And then of course your input channel, mine is the mono right on the second channel. So there is a mono right on the second channel. Sample rate matches, one second. Sample rate matches, buffer size matches. Your plugin will probably lie to you. This is four milliseconds one way. So therefore you double it, it's an eight millisecond round trip. Again, human ear can't decipher less than 10 milliseconds. Maybe I'm a nerd, because I'm certainly not an audiophile. I can hear the difference, but this is the sacrifice we make to get this going. Pop that down. And then once you close out of here, you should be able to hear your guitar if I turn it on. And voila, you now have your guitar routed from your headphones per se, or your speakers, depending on what your sound card offers, or your external speakers, or your monitor, or your printer, or whatever. You have that broadcasting to your OBS, which I'll do in another video. This was just to get here. Because of that insert, you have that audio coming in from voice meter, so from your guitar into voice meter, into your plugin, and that little insert highlight button takes the processed audio and pops it back into potato and then back into your ears. And then wherever you decide to broadcast it, it goes as well. So that is the quick and dirty setup. It ain't pretty. I still hate the latency. Once I'm done editing this video, I will probably never use this setup again. I have already found a better slash lower latency way to make all of this happen. And I really think it's the better alternative, but if you are in the voice meter ecosystem and if you are okay with the settings presented, it works. This setup legitimately works. It's what I'm recording this video on right now. Make sure if you have any questions to leave them down below. I think I did a pretty thorough job, but I'm always open to helping. I'm not going to delete voice meter. I'm just not going to use it again. If I have made your life better by making it more difficult for showing you this, throw a like on the video. It helps more than you could possibly imagine. And if you are watching this without being subscribed, consider subscribing. I will do more guitaring. I will do more gaming. I will do more gothing, I think. And I will definitely do more giant nerd stuff like this because this has been hella fun for me. Either way, if you've stuck around this long, thank you so very much from the bottom of my black little heart. And remember, be safe, be consensual, and if you can't be good, well then, sweet Satan on a pogo stick, be good at it. Bye. <laughs>